Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and today we're going to look at Sprint's latest flagship phone. This is the HTC Evo 4G LTE. They like that 4G LTE thing at the end there at Sprint. And the Evo has always been a really popular line. The first Evo was a really amazing phone at the time. And it's gone, you know, and some Evos are better than others. But this one, boy, this is the real deal. This is an excellent phone. And we're going to take a look at it now. So this is the HTC Evo 4G LTE. It's going to be available on Sprint May 18th for $199 with contract. And it's definitely their highest end phone now on Sprint. And it's also their best phone. We're going to tell you that right up front before you even watch the entire video. It's really, really a nice phone. It has shares a lot of DNA with the HTC One series, particularly the HTC One X, the higher end One series phone, but it's distinctly Evo. HTC said that they, they did a lot of customization for Sprint to make this truly a Sprint Evo phone versus something that looks more like the One X, and we'll show you for comparison right here. Both have 4.7 inch 720p displays, they're both large phones but actually not huge. HTC does a very good job of making a 4.7 inch phone about as small as some 4.3 and 4.5 inch phones. Both run ice cream sandwich. So you're looking at a lot of the same stuff going on here. But let's go back to looking at the Evo now. The phone weighs 4.73 ounces so despite its metal build and its high quality look and feel it's not a super duper heavy phone that's going to weigh down your pocket. Again 4.7 inch display. Obviously, we have capacitive buttons down here. I'm not going to complain about that. Even though it's running Android OS 4.03 Ice Cream Sandwich, you don't have to have all those hardware buttons, but I think we're all used to them and they're pretty easy to find, fairly well masked, so you can see them even without them being lit up, but they do indeed light up if you need them to. Big earpiece over here and a nice kind of very matte metal finish that's kind of trendy right now in automotive industry and we're seeing that copied in the cell phone industry. And if you look at the side, boy, nice skinny phone. Some, the Evo has gotten looking a little chunky, some of the older ones, but this one's going back to being about as thin as it can be, just like the One Series. So you're looking at about a third of an inch right there. And beautiful looking. We've got this nice kind of brushed aluminum wrap around on the phone. And if you take a look at the back, this is probably the most controversial thing about the looks. This again is that matte kind of finish here. This is not removable. The battery is sealed inside, 2000 milliamp battery. And we've got the gloss over here. Now, I think it kind of makes it look a little bit more interesting rather than being the same old look at that battleship gray phone on the back kind of thing. Not that this looks like a dull battleship gray, but whether you like it or not, well, only you know that. The bad thing about it, though, is it does pick up a lot of fingerprints, this gloss black part here. And what's this red strip about? It's not just for looks. This is the kickstand. Sprint wanted this for their Evo line, and here it is. And it's now two-way, folks, so you don't have to say, oh, look, my USB port is blocked for charging. You can flip it either way. You can use it the more normal way right here that you'd expect, but if you flip it over the other way, it works as well. And now your micro USB port is up top here, so you can charge the phone while you're watching movies. Pretty cool. By the way, this is an MHL compatible micro USB port that means if you pick up that optional $20 dongle you can plug it into your HDMI monitor or TV so you can watch stuff on the big screen using your phone. And it's more than up to the job because it has a 1.5 GHz dual core Qualcomm fourth generation CPU that's the Crate CPU and it's very fast benchmarks faster than the Tegra 3 quad core while having very good battery life so we're not going to complain about that either. Taking another look at the back here, this is our LED flash and our 8 megapixel camera and this has the HTC image chip, that means it can shoot 60 frames per second video and it has that neat, you can shoot simultaneous photos while capturing video as well feature and all that nice stuff. Lots and lots of camera features there. Got our speaker grill down here, not super duper loud. Doesn't help that it's facing out the back either, but if you do have it on your desk it will reflect off the desk dedicated camera button here. That was something Sprint wanted for their phone. Something you usually don't see except for on Windows phones these days. Volume rockers are right up here. Power buttons up here. Blends in nicely with the design. Very pretty looking. A little bit hard to press. Microphone hole up here. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack here. Another microphone hole down here. 
for noise reduction. And this has Qualcomm's new HD voice technology. Now that's only going to work if you're using two phones that have that new voice codec installed. So that means right now it's Evo 4G to Evo 4G uh, LTE when you're when Sprint turns that on on the network, but we did test that at CTIA, and boy, it sounds very good. Definitely noticeably better than standard voice quality. Front here, you have your video chat camera. Works with Google Talk, video chat, Skype, and all those usual good solutions. So that's our look around the phone. You can see we've got the same home screen here by default that we have on the HTC One series. Beautiful display, super LCD, nice and color accurate bright, good color saturation, 720p, so that means 1280 by 720 pixels. And on top of Ice Cream Sandwich, we have HTC Sense 4, as we've seen on other recent HTC One Series phones. So you've got their usual flip clock with weather, which I think everybody loves pretty well. Launcher strip down here that's customizable. Also, the customizable lock screen, so if you turn it off and turn it on, you can see you can drag one of these to the lock ring to launch it. So say we want to launch mail. There we go, and it's taking us into mail setup because we haven't set up mail on the phone. And you can customize which apps are on that screen as well. And if you want to get to settings, tap over here, and you can see the HTC customized settings. Uh, they just basically give it cuter icons, a white background, and that neat little separation to let you know when you reach the end of the line. And since HTC owns a big share of Beats Audio, this also has Beats Audio, which works with any brand of headphones. You don't have to have Beats headphones. And there's a variety of settings, just as we've shown you again on the HTC One series. You don't have to go with the default Beats setting, which is kind of bass heavy. If you don't like it, there's a variety of settings, classical, you name it. And it really does make the sound a little bit better, a little bit fuller and richer. And here's what our application drawer looks like. Again, customized by HTC. Same thing we've been seeing on Sense 4 for a while. Now this is all applications. It's sideways scrolling. Nice and fast. You can switch to frequently loaded apps and to anything that you've downloaded just like that. And you can customize those tabs as well. So overall, HTC did a nice job with Ice Cream Sandwich. You still see the underpinnings of it. It's, it's not been uh, stomped upon, shall we say. But they do make it a little bit more user friendly and they give you the clock widget and their social networking widget which is handy for Facebook and Twitter both and a couple of other. So I think it's a nice value added software that they put on top of this. In terms of other applications, we've got HTC Hub on here, HTC's own little mobile guide to help you get going with the phone. So all the standard Google apps are on board. We've got the HTC Car app that people love. We've got the Sprint Hotspot, so you can use this as a hotspot for your, your tablet or your laptop. Google Wallet's pre-installed, and this has NFC, by the way, with Google Wallet. Sprint's uh, actually going with that. That's nice, rather than a different payment system. So you can start to use that now if you want at Starbucks and other places that accept NFC payments. You can also use NFC to transfer stuff between another phone, Android phone, that is, with uh, NFC, if you wish. The phone doesn't come loaded with a lot of Sprint apps, like some Sprint phones do. We've got access to your Sprint account on here, but we don't have Sprint TV preloaded or NASCAR or NBA or any of that other stuff. In fact, we, we downloaded Sprint TV on the phone, but it actually wasn't able to authorize and start playing videos. And it may be because the phone actually hasn't launched yet on their network and they're not set up to work with it. And it might come in the future, but you're not glommed with love Sprint stuff here. In fact, Sprint Navigation isn't even pre-installed. But have no fear, you can download Sprint Navigation, which is really Telenav, from the Google Play Store. And you can see we've got it running right here. It works just fine. And, of course, you can use Google Maps and Google Navigation, Google Places, all the Google location-based services as well. As we mentioned, the phone has a really fast dual-core CPU. That Qualcomm Crate CPU benchmarks a bit faster than the Tegra 3. We got 5,000 on Quadrant. On Tutu, we got 7,000. And for the SunSpider JavaScript test, it managed that in 1650. So that's really very good stuff there. And the nice thing about the crate is it's very powerful. Phone doesn't get too hot. Now, if you're playing 3D games for half an hour, you'll feel it heat up a little bit on the backside. That's what happens when you have a really thin phone and a lot of metal, but it doesn't get burningly hot or anything like that. And so far, we've been very pleased with battery life. We've made it through the day easily with this. Now, part of the reason we did is because this just has EVDO Rev A 3G. And of course it has LTE, but Sprint's LTE network won't be lit up until the middle of 2012. So right now 
even though we're in one of the first markets that will get it, it's still not live here. We're not able to use LTE, which is a power-hungry technology, though not as bad as WiMAX. So those of you who use WiMAX phones, WiMAX phones, take heart in that fact. But still, we've been using Wi-Fi a lot, and even so, we've had pretty good battery life. Now, in terms of uh, the 3G speeds, we're not in the greatest reception area here for Sprint. Actually, we do okay in terms of bars, but uh, the network is just not that fast. So you can see a range of speeds that we got. As you might guess, the highest number is where we had the strongest signal, but surprisingly so is the lowest number, so sometimes network congestion can make all the difference in the world. But we did get much better ping times, which is a, an indication of the chipset's network performance, versus the Galaxy Nexus on Sprint and the LG Viper 4G LTE. Now we'll check out 1080p video playback. We're just going to use the standard gallery application for that. We've got our test file, which is a 1080p MPEG-4 encoded high profile. And as we mentioned, you can output that via HDMI if you get an MHL adapter. And this also has DLNA. And soon it will work with HDC's little streaming box thing that they're going to sell that connects to your TV. And we'll use our handy kickstand here. So that's what the volume said, three quarters, not too bad, not the loudest that we've heard, but not bad, sound quality is good, and obviously you can handle that 1080p playback, no problem, it's playing nice and smoothly. Beautiful screen, by the way, really nice for watching videos. And now let's take a look at the web browser, we loaded our own site, Mobile Tech Review, and you can see it loads just fine. We're we have the option to load desktop site and load Adobe Flash on. Those are actually little check boxes, and we'll show you here. Here's your browser menu. Access to bookmarks, tabs, view desktop site, and enable Adobe Flash. So make sure you select those if you actually want to do either of those things with the browser. Works just fine. Pinch zooming is very fluid. We would show you Adobe Flash Player, which does work fine on device, but right now you. Google and YouTube are having a little bit of a problem with their embedded flash serving. And now we're checking out Death Rally, which is a free 3D racing game. Pretty fun, though also hard to steer, but hey. And it plays just fine, despite my challenges here trying to steer it. I feel like this phone can play any game that you can throw at it. And lastly, we're going to look at the camera because it's so very capable and has so many features. The 8 megapixel camera on the back takes really great shots. It certainly gives the iPhone a run for its money and it's a dedicated imaging chip as we mentioned. So here we're going to focus on our nice little orchid plant here. And if you're shooting video, it starts immediately and you can take photos at the same time. You can see they're popping up down there, so not a problem. Can record 1080p video, you can do 60 FIPS recording. You've got all sorts of neat things here. You've got the variety of effects that are available here, and it gives you a little visual indication what they do. Vintage, country, mono, vintage warm, all that stuff. You can be your own little Instagram here. And then for other features, you've got self-timer, which camera you want to use, front or back, video quality, image quality, review duration, ISO, white balance, continuous shooting function, and more. Definitely a very capable camera, takes nice photos. And you've got quick access to gallery here and you can see the photos that we just shot. Well here's our video of the plant actually. And you can take photos of the so same Nice so sharp, good frame rate. And there are the still shots that we took at the same time. Picture of our cat in very low light. Did a pretty good job. Turned the flash on there. Didn't overexpose his white chest too, too much. It's very dark, nearly black room. So that's the HTC Evo 4G LTE available on Sprint May 18th for $199 with contract. Really a beautiful phone. 
excellent display, 720p, 4.7 inch, really nice to look at. Gorgeous looking phone overall too, just looks like a very high quality piece, nice design accents everywhere. Interesting back, you got that kickstand here, you have the, the gloss that does show fingerprints, as you can see it's already gotten a little bit mucked up, but still pretty nice overall. Definitely a phone that we like very fast. We only wish that Sprint's LTE network was live now, but well, that's coming starting this summer, they say, so you can look forward to faster data speeds in your future. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.